I frequently give speeches and live presentations about AI to hundreds of finance professionals in many different countries. And when I ask the audience to stand up if they use AI for complex tasks, only 5% of the audience stands up. So in this video, I will explain why using AI is essential and we are going to go over all the important use cases for it. I will give you a step-by-step -step game plan that you can use to incorporate AI into your workflow and stand out from your colleagues. And if you are a leader, I will also explain you how you can implement AI into your team or even your entire company. First, why use AI? Across every sector, people who learn to use AI become much more valuable and the people who don't incorporate AI will slowly get replaced. If you are not convinced yet, let me give you the benefits of using AI for finance. First, productivity. I use it myself every day to write, to create documents, procedures, checklists. I save so much time. Second, for tools. I thought I knew Excel, but now with ChatGPT or Copilot, I'm so much better because AI is helping me use Excel better. I learn new formulas every day. I actually made several videos on how you can use AI with Excel and also how to create PowerPoint with ChatGPT. So go check them out. Number three, financial analysis. Yes, you can do analysis with AI, like sales analysis, sensitivity analysis, Pareto analysis, trade. You will be so much faster and you will learn new type of analysis. Number four, commentaries. You can actually make AI write your commentaries for you. We know how well AI can write. Make AI draft that for you and you will save a lot of time and you will write better. You can either use any LLMs and give your figures if you can or give fake figures but get the wording from it. Or if you like to code or use AI to code, you can use Python to call an API from OpenAI, for example, and just send your figures and receive commentaries on these figures. Number five, forecasting. Yes, AI is not only about ChatGPT. AI is also about machine learning and understanding from past data and from external data, which type of relationship and trends that could impact the future. And for this, you can actually use seasonality algorithm, you can use linear forecasting, or you can even use other type of algorithm that are already available for you through Python. Now that we talked about the benefits, let's see how you can implement AI into your workflow. Let me show you the different phases of implementing AI into your work. So first, let's start with LLMs. How can you use those LLMs? If you are a beginner, you probably use it like Google. Don't use it like Google, really. Instead, use my formula, the CSI and FBI. Because with CSI and FBI, you are going to learn how to prompt better. Once you know how to use this framework, you will be so much better in using those LLMs. What is CSI and LBI? CSI is for context, specific, and instructions. This is the simple way to prompt. But if you want something a bit more advanced, then use FBI, format, blueprint, and identity. So now that you know how to prompt, how are you going to implement that? Well, what I suggest everybody is to start writing down all of your tasks. And then the day after, Try each task, but now with AI. This is what is called the AI first approach. If you are going to try 10 use cases per day, maybe only two or three works, but imagine after five days, you have 10 use cases that work. After one month, then you have 30 to 50 use cases that work. And on top, if you share with your colleagues those use cases, your team will be unbeatable. So what could be those tasks? Imagine next time you are struggling in Excel, go into ChatGPT or Copilot to ask for help. Next time you spend more than five minutes on a text, again, check AI to help you write. Or next time that your boss is coming to you to solve a problem, why should you brainstorm alone? No, call your AI friend and have a discussion together to see how you can improve your proposal to your boss. So now you have done it with simple task. Let's think about more complex tasks. How can you use AI for this task? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to incorporate AI in your processes. That means that now, next month, if you have to prepare a report, 
Instead of having to write from scratch, try to structure a prompt that explains how you write, but now make AI draft the commentaries for you. That could be one process. Number two, let's imagine that you want to automate some task, for example, combining some Excel files together. Well, you can get this code either with VBA or with Python, and this code is going to be written by AI. That's again another way to really quickly use AI to save a lot of time. Now that we talked about you as individual, what you can learn. Let's address now for leaders of companies, if you're a finance manager, a CFO, what can you do with your team and with your company? I will explain first what applies for small companies, then for middle one, and then for bigger one. But something important, everything I'm explaining for smaller companies is also applicable for big ones, because in each big companies, we have smaller teams. If you are a leader of a smaller company, a smaller team, start first by making sure all of your team have LLM licenses. What does it mean? Either if you use already Microsoft, make sure all of your team has Copilot chat, but also Copilot Excel, Copilot PowerPoint, and even Copilot Business, because you can search with Copilot through your Outlook or through your documents each time you prompt. That's really cool to try. And if you don't use Microsoft, you can use ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini. Just make sure you have a corporate license because like this, your team will be free to use it and will have no stress to think about if they are doing a mistake or not by using AI at work. Second, if you have small teams, then start with your P to P process, procure to pay. This is the process that needs to be digitized straight away if you have not done it yet. Meaning you have paper invoices, then really attack this because this is the process where you spend a lot of time and already all of the tools that are out there are really good to process invoices and map it and book it in your ERP automatically. Then the third thing to do if you're a small team is to start automating your task with Python. You can use now AI to code Python. You don't even need to be a coder. And Python is so good to automate tasks, for example, combining files or cleaning data or even create reports for you. Now, let's look at medium sized companies or medium sized. First, look at one use case where you have a lot of transactions or where you do a lot of manual work. For example, do you have to review a lot of contracts where you have then to book the revenue recognition and it's a lot of manual work? Well, use an AI tool that can read the contracts and identify for you those revenue recognition steps. So this first step, what I call it, is to invest in AI native tools that are really good in one process. And for this, you can check, I have the market map of the top 100 AI tools. Check it here. Then number two, start using forecasting with machine learning. It means that with the help of Python and AI, you can code mini algorithm with your historical data and start forecasting using algorithms that are already existing. You don't need to build your own. And it's really fast. Just get Python, get your data, and start building those mini forecasting with seasonality or with linear regression. And number three, if you already have automation, probably RPA or low-code automations with Zapier or Make or even Power Automate from Microsoft, then start to incorporate inside some NLP components, meaning that you call AI to either generate text or to understand text and based on this, make an action. Now, let's talk about big companies. What should they do? Most of you will not be part of the big companies, but what they are doing right now, they are investing in creating their own model or rather fine-tuning the existing one with their own data. So like this, they have a version of the big models, but with their own data. That's what they do, so number one. Number two, instead of using existing forecasting models, they will build their own forecasting models. I talked, for example, with Coca-Cola. They are doing that. Microsoft was also doing that a long time ago. So this is what big companies do. So number three, chatbots. Imagine all of these requests coming to finance. Your team can actually get a chatbot that will answer to most of these questions. This, you can do it with Copilot in Microsoft or with other type of software that are focused on chatbots. So one question I always get 
as well as about data confidentiality. Well, for this, what I suggest you is to check this video. I hope this video will help you start leveraging AI and become a more valuable asset for your company. Now, if you want to learn the ins and outs of AI for finance, I created a five-day email course going much more in depth on this topic and it's completely free. So just click the first link below to get it. And if you want to learn how you can use AI to 10x your Excel skills, check the next video. I see you there.